Let's combine the power of shader graph and the visual effect graph to come up with a really nice stylized smoke effect. Ready? Let's go. First, let's create a new unlit shader graph. And let's make sure that the graph is set to opaque. We're gonna start with a texture 2D and we always have to sample those out. And I'm gonna default this texture to just a white circle. That's literally all this is. So the basic premise of how this is gonna work is we're gonna use a Voronoi node and we're gonna use these black dots to basically cut holes into this texture here. And the easiest way to do that is to just go to our graph settings and enable alpha clipping. And if you wanna see a really basic example of that working, if you plug the output of the sample into our base color and plug the output of the Voronoi into our alpha, you can see that as we play around with the alpha clip threshold, it'll start cutting away pieces of our texture, which is great. So let's create an exposed float property, and exposed means it's serialized, meaning it'll show up in the inspector as a value that we can change, and let's call it alpha clip. Make it a slider between zero and one, and let's default it to 0 0.5, and plug that into the alpha clip threshold here. Next, a big problem we have here is that since we're using the Voronoi to control our alpha, the corners are showing up in black instead of being cut out. I definitely want those gone. So what I want to do is mask this out of this. And how we'll do that is by dragging this into a subtract node. And think of this as A minus B. So if we plug the sample into A and the Voronoi into B, maybe I'm being thick, but this is not intuitive as to what's happening here for me. But if we reverse those and say the Voronoi minus the alpha of the sample, suddenly I feel like this just makes a lot of sense. I'm subtracting this whole white area from the Voronoi which is literally the opposite of what we want. So what we'll do is flip the alpha of the sample texture with a one minus node and plug that in instead. Now our Voronoi is surrounded by black, which will act as transparency when we plug it into the alpha. There you go, much better. Next, I wanna pretty this up a little bit because it's pretty boring right now. So first let's add an exposed float called Voronoi scale and let's default that to three and plug that into the cell density of the Voronoi node. And you can see that if we scroll through the angle offset, we get this nice random animation on the Voronoi. So let's animate that by adding a time node and multiplying it by a new exposed float called Voronoi speed. And let's default it to one. And now it's gonna animate all on its own. Next, we can add a little more detail to this by adding some shading in here. And we'll do that with a Fresnel effect node. We can control the strength of it with the power property. So let's create another exposed float called Fresnel power and default it to 0 0.2. So I'd like it to be the opposite of this so that it's dark around the edges and gets lighter towards the center. So again, let's plug that into a one minus node. Now I wanna multiply this with the rest of my circle in order to combine them together. So we can plug this into a multiply node and if we break this connection and instead plug it into that multiply node as well and plug that output into the base color, that's looking pretty good. Now it would be nice to be able to control the color of this. So let's add an exposed color and make it HDR cause you never know, options are always good. And we'll multiply this output by the color and plug that into the base color. There we go. So back in Unity, let's create a new material with this shader by right clicking on the shader and selecting new material. And let's assign that material to a new particle system. Now here's the thing, you can change or add a few settings with the regular particle system, but you can see that this looks <laughs> I don't know, it looks weird. It doesn't look like smoke to me anyways. What would bring this to the next level is if we could access these settings from our shader within the particle system itself. But you can't do that with the particle system. But you can do that with the visual effect graph. So let's do that. Make sure you have the visual effect graph installed. You might not by default. And I'm using the universal render pipeline right now. So let's disable this particle system and in our project window, create a new visual effect graph and in our hierarchy, create a new visual effect and plug in that smoke VFX we just made. Now, before we continue, go back to our shader and in the graph inspector, go down to support VFX graph and enable it. If you don't do this, then the alpha clipping's not gonna work properly as well as some other things probably.
Now, if we open up our visual effects, you'll see there's this shader graph section in the output particle quad. And if that's not there for you, try going to edit, preferences, visual effects, and turn on experimental operators and blocks. Now go ahead and assign the shader to it. Now this is where the magic comes together. Let's change this texture, but instead of just assigning it here, let's add a texture 2D property and plug that in. This all works very similarly to shader graph. Now back in the inspector, that's a property that we can assign there. So now we're going to be able to control shader properties with exposed visual effects properties. So let's first take advantage of this by making sure that we dissolve the smoke away. And to do that, we're going to animate a curve and plug that curve into our alpha clip here. So to do that, let's add a sample curve and I'm gonna pick this one and push this over to the right a bit so that it doesn't start dissolving straight away. But let's put it up at the start so that it does start at least a little bit dissolved. And to animate this, just plug an age over lifetime node into the time input. Each particle has an age between zero and one, so as it ages, it'll push along this curve here. And now let's plug that into our alpha clip. And now you can see each particle is slowly dissolving away. Let's get rid of all this here. And let's add a set size and change this to uniform so it'll change to an A and a B. And I'm going to set that between 1.5 and 3. And also let's add a size over lifetime, but change the composition to multiply, otherwise it's just going to overwrite this one. And you can plug in a curve there. And now let's change the color over lifetime as well, and we're going to do that by manipulating our color property here. Add a sample gradient, and you can plug the age over lifetime into the time as well for this. And for this gradient, let's add an exposed gradient as a property so that we can change it in the inspector. By default, let's get rid of all of these alpha keys up here because this is an opaque shader, so we're not gonna have transparency. And let's go with white with a little bit of intensity at the start and then gray in the middle and then darker gray at the end. And at this point, if you're seeing some weird flickering with your particles, your Fresnel power might be a little bit too low, so try adjusting that a little bit higher. There's a few more little tweaks we can do to make this look better, like setting a random angle on the Z. And we can set a random lifetime, depending on how long you want the smoke to live. This should already be here by default, by the way. And if you want to expose a vector 3 for the velocity, we could plug that into the A here. And for the B, we could negate the X. And maybe add a random number for the Y. I don't know why the capacity defaults so low, but let's increase that to 1000 and add an exposed property for our spawn rate as well. And at this point, just keep playing around with some values until you're happy. Maybe we could also add an exposed property for our Voronoi scale and speed so that we have finer control over that as well. And there you go, a really nice stylized smoke effect using shader graph and the visual effect graph. Like the video if you liked, and my patrons get access to the source files of my tutorials, so if you're interested in that, you can head on over there. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Zandra Kessler, Darren Preen, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Waite, Couch, and Christopher Nichols, as well as our early access patrons, Zyoma, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Audu Games, Jan, Donnie Briggs, and Alexander Prestis. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.